So now we'll discuss about mechanism of reaction 2. What was reaction 2? Reaction 2 was ROH reacting with PCL5 or PX5. So if I write PX5 like this, oxygen has two pair of electrons. Now, OH is a poor leaving group. Now, this pair of electron of O will try to form a bond with P present over here. But P cannot form any new bond because its valency is fulfilled. All maximum bonds what it can form is already done. So to form a new bond, phosphorus will have to break an existing bond. And in result, there will be a transition state which will be formed and that will be like this. R getting a positive charge because it has given its pair of electron to phosphorus to make a bond. P, X, 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 X. Now, earlier phosphorus had 5 X and now it has lost 1 X to form a new bond with oxygen and now has got 4 X bonds. Now, this oxygen which has gained a positive charge has become a better leaving group as compared to the OH which was there earlier. This has got better leaving group. Moreover, we have X minus in the solution which can attack which can attack onto the carbon which is attached to this O so that this O can be kicked out. Whenever we already know this, whenever the back attack happens, whenever an incoming nucleophile attacks at the back of a, a carbon, SN2 reaction takes place. So here the mechanism what X will be following to attack the carbon where oxygen is attached will be SN2. Now when X will attack, this oxygen will break its bond with R and this whole group will come out as a leaving group. So what will be the product formed? This is our transition state. What, will be the, what, what is the product form? The product form will be Rx plus this whole molecule will be coming out as a leaving group. It will be POH X4. Now this is the desired alkyl halide. And this POX4 will self dissociate to form POX3 plus HX. This reaction mechanism from transition state till the final product will go through SN2 mechanism. Your X minus will attack on carbon which is attached to oxygen through SN2 mechanism. Hence, if this R is or if the carbon where X is attached is the chiral carbon, there will be inversion of configuration inversion of configuration will take place. So inversion of configuration. Now note this down so that we can move to the next reaction. So next we'll be doing reaction of alcohol with SOCl2. So we have two type of reactions what can happen. First is ROH reacting with SOCl2 in the presence of ether and pyridine. What is pyridine? This is the structure of pyridine. So in this reaction, we will get RCL and other side products. And this reaction will go through SN2 mechanism. Same reaction when we do in the absence of pyridine, so that means again we have taken ROH in the presence of SOCl2 and ether, no pyridine. The products which are formed are same. So we again get RCL, but the mechanism what this reaction will be following will be SNI mechanism. This is called as internal nucleophilic substitution. This we will be studying later on. So right now we will try to understand the mechanism of the first reaction. 
Let's see the mechanism. In reaction 1, first step, we have alcohol. Alcohol will come in contact with SOCl2. O of oxygen would try to form a bond with S. And S will break its existing bond with O so that it can accommodate that pair of electron and make a bond. In that process, a transition state will form where oxygen will gain a positive charge, oxygen of alcohol. Oxygen of sulfur will gain a negative charge will, and two chlorines will be attached. So this is a transition state of this reaction. Now what we can see is Oxygen of alcohol is gaining a positive charge. Oxygen of sulfur is gaining a negative charge. Both of these oxygens will try to neutralize their charge in such a way uh, so that they can form a new bond and kick out some existing bonds or break down some existing bonds. So this oxygen will try to form a bond with sulfur again. And in that case, sulfur will have to break its bond with chlorine. This oxygen, which has a positive charge, again wants to get stabilized by pulling back the electron pair and it will try to break its bond with hydrogen. So that means in this reaction, hydrogen as well as chlorine, both will be coming out. Both will, be, both, uh, will come out in the reaction as a product. So that means we can say HCl will come out as a product. So eventually the product form will be R O S double bond O C L plus H C L. This will be the product of the first step. Now we have H C L in the system and we have this product in the system. In the second step, this H C L will react with this HCl will react with pyridine and will form a salt. We can also write it as NH plus Cl minus. Now, if you can, if you if you notice, we had a uh, ether as a solvent and we have got an HCl over here to dissociate this HCl and make chlorine available for the nucleophilic reaction we have reacted it with pyridine so that it can get converted into salt and the Cl- minus becomes available for the next step of reaction which is again nucleophilic attack. Let's see the third step. In third step of reaction, we have ROS double bond OCl and now chlorine, the Cl minus, which can get generated from this pyridine, I can write it over here. This Cl minus will attack on R, back attack. And will try to replace this leaving group. Now when this leaving group will come out, the bond between R and O will break. When the bond between R and O will break, this O will try to form a new bond with sulfur. And in that case, sulfur will break its bond with chlorine. Just look at here again. So what is happening? This chlor chlorine minus is attacking on R. R is breaking its bond with existing oxygen. This oxygen will try to form a new bond with sulfur. And sulfur will break down its bond with 
chlorine. So what we will get as a product? In product, we will get RCl plus oxygen and sulfur has made a bond and sulfur has already broken its bond with chlorine. So we will get SO2 plus Cl minus. This Cl minus will again go back to pyridine. Pyridine and H plus and this will form salt again or you can say this HCl will be available in the system and we will get the pyridine back which was there initially in the reaction acting as a catalyst. So this way pyridine will come out as it is. We will have in the solution HCl, SO2 has formed over here and RCl has formed over here. The back attack which has happened has done an SN2 reaction. Inversion of the product will take place if there isn't any, if uh, the compound is optically active. Inversion of the configuration. Just note this down.